أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله within this chapter we aim to discuss on this celebratory nights and this auspicious occasion the biography and a few lessons to be learned from the life of our second Imam, Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba alayhi wa salam. Now, when looking into the life of Imam al-Hassan alayhi wa salam, I think we can all come to understand the oppression that this Imam has gone through throughout history and I say that with a very heavy heart in such a joyful occasion of his birth and that is mainly because we don't hear about this Imam enough Imam al-Hassan alayhi afdal salati was salam was the first child you know, coming from Rasulullah, Fatima al-Zahra, and Amir al-Mu'mineen. You had Fatima al-Zahra, you had Prophethood, you had Imamat. And they all came together in order for this Imam to come under their guidance, their supervision. And he learned everything from them. So imagine having those mentors raising a child. So imagine what he was capable of, the knowledge that he had, the morals that he had. Everything that surrounded his life, he learned from those around him. So you can find that we don't hear enough about this Imam. As in, as Shia, how many of us can say that we know five stories about the life of Imam al-Hassan, alayhi afdal salatu wassalam? How many of us can say that we know the biography of Imam al-Hassan, alayhi afdal salatu wassalam? How many of us have learned a story about Imam al-Hassan, the generosity of Imam al-Hassan, the morality of Imam al-Hassan, the knowledge of Imam al-Hassan, and not only learned it, but we've also taken a perspective of it in order for us to apply within our lives. Now, delving slightly, so we may, we may benefit as much as we can within these holy nights. A brief biography of Imam Hassan that we may learn from is the fact that he was born on a night like tonight on the 15th of the holy month of Ramadan the third year after the hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and he was the first born of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima al Zahra and indeed the first grandchild of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and Imam al-Hassan died aged 47. And you'll find he died by the poison that was given to him by a woman by the name of Ju'da bint Ash'ad ibn Qais, which he was married to at the time. And you'll find that his death date was the 28th of Safar in the year 50 after Hijrah. And we'll find seven years of Imam al-Hassan's life was spent in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. 29 years of his life, he was alongside Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi afdal salati wa salam. And after Amir al-Mu'mineen would pass and was martyred within the night of Ramadan, we'll find that his imamat when it started, lasted for approximately 10 years. But how much have we learnt of what Imam al-Hassan went through during these 10 years of his imamat? Many of us will hear about the sulh, the treaty between Imam al-Hassan and Muawiyah. But other than that, we don't find ourselves learning about the story of Imam al-Hassan So we're going to look at first and foremost in this chapter, the birth in itself and how beautiful a tradition it is. When we find on the 15th of Ramadan, 
that Fatima to Zahra would give birth to this fruit for this world to learn from. And indeed, she looks towards Amir al Mu'mineen and she would say, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, what would you like to name this boy of ours? And he says to Fatima, ha Fatima, how can I name him before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? And then when Rasulullah enters, he says, Oh Rasulullah, what have you named this boy? Rasulullah would reply by saying, How can I name him before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names him? And that's where the tradition says that Jibra'il comes down and he says the following, Ya Rasulullah, name him the same name as the son of Harun. Very interesting analogy here. So Rasulullah says to Jibra'il, Jibra'il wa masmu. What's the name of the son of Harun? The Jibra'il replies by saying, the name of the son of Harun is Shubbar. The Rasulullah would look at Jibra'il and he would say, Ya Jibra'il, inna lisani l'arabi. Meaning my tongue is an Arabic tongue. Would you not give me the name that I would name him in an Arabic tongue? And that's when Jibra'il would say, Sammihi al-Hasan. Jibra'il would say to Rasulullah that name him Al-Hasan. The beauty in this tradition, there are so many. But just to point out a few points that we may learn from the eloquence and the beauty of even naming a child, that we'll find in many traditions that we have, Rasulullah would say to Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ya Ali, anta li bimanzilati Haruna min Musa, illa annahu la nabiya ba'di. Rasulullah would say to Amir al muminin Ya Ali, you are to me like Harun was to Musa, except there is no prophet after me. And the interesting aspect there is when Jibra'il comes down, he says, call him the same name as the son of Harun Shubbar. Now, as we know, the second one is Shubbar and Shub Shubair or Shabir in different traditions and different pronunciations. Now, when we delve into the Arabic conjugation, let's say, and syntax, we begin to analyze that there is a concept called a tasghir. Meaning, as an example, we may look at a river and say, this river is called Nahar. But if we were to say a smaller river, we would say Nuhair, signifying a smaller river. Now, in the aspect of Imam al-Hasan, when we find Hassan is called al-Hasan based on Shubbar, the son of Harun. Now, we know Shubbar and the second was named as Shub Shubair or Shabir. Likewise, we have Hassan as Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam and his younger brother called Hussein. In its understanding, meaning the smaller Hassan in this understanding of the Arabic language, which is in a beauty in itself, that the sons of Harun are called Shubbar and Shubair or Shabir, and you'll find the sons of Imam Ali are called Hassan and Hussein, meaning the elder and the younger. And that's the beauty that we find in that particular tradition. Now the greatness of Imam al-Hassan, to end the chapter tonight, we want to signify in the upcoming nights, different aspects of Imam al-Hassan's life. But we want to look at and understand that Imam al-Hassan isn't just great because of who the people were around him. Because many of us do an injustice, more so to Imam al-Hassan, by saying to ourselves that Imam al-Hassan was great because his grandfather was Rasulullah. That we say Imam al-Hassan was great because his mother was Fatima to Zahra, Sayyidat Nisa al-Alameen. We say that Imam al-Hassan was great because his father was Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. And we don't delve into the morals of Imam al-Hassan, the generosity of Imam al-Hassan, the character of Imam al-Hassan, alayhi afdal salati wa salam. And that's something we really need to delve into in the upcoming nights to understand in a glimpse the beauty of this individual that we are blessed to honor his birth in these nights. So insha'Allah, we can end this chapter by 
understanding the oppression of Imam al Hassan and how much we as followers of Ahl al Bayt need to put an emphasis of understanding, acknowledging, and learning from the life of Imam al Hassan. Alayhi Abdullah Salati wassalam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.